Hey guys, Dr. Bo here, that's me, a fit care physiotherapy. Fit care says if you care about your fitness, you can avoid the health care system. And that is what I'm talking about today. I have been focusing on my fitness a little bit harder ever since I actually tore my ACL 2008, about 14 years ago, I had the surgery, and I've been focusing on building my fitness, mostly through CrossFit, right? The idea is we're getting as strong as possible, as mobile as possible, so we have good ability to define fitness, and we're gonna go into that in all sorts of other videos. I've already done that, I'm gonna keep doing that. But the point is, I then went skiing. This is my first year really skiing, first ski season. I got the snowboard back here, that's Mahas, my wife. Um, she tried to get me into that and I chose against snowboarding because it seemed like a very injurious learning curve and I chose skiing instead and my ninth day this year, about 16 days ago, I went on a black with a friend of mine and I had a funky jump, fall, twist, whatever you want to call it and my knee had a big old twist and a lot of pain right there. And without going too much into the details of my injury, I want to talk about what a physical therapist, with all my learnings and all the things, the way I would treat somebody, what I was able to do for healing my own body. So learn from me, learn from my injury. Uh, we, you know, There's a great book called The Gift of Injury by Stuart McGill, uh, who is one of the top spine researchers in the world. And he wrote it with Brian Carroll, I believe. I hope I'm not messing that name up because he's one of the strongest human beings alive. Uh, one of the only humans to deadlift and squat over a thousand pounds in the same meat or, or something like that. Impressive guy. Good book, The Gift of Injury. I highly recommend it. So how are we gonna focus on my knee injury? Uh, we're gonna talk about what things you can control. And that's really the biggest thing that we need to understand here. So the first day I had an injury uh, on the ski slopes, I started reaching out to my network of physical therapists that I trust that I've known for a long time, um, who I know are very adept at ski injuries especially, and knee injuries as well. So I reached out to them, I got on a few calls, I explained what was going on, and assessment is the first big thing that we're gonna push here. So whatever your injury is, it's helpful to have a musculoskeletal expert, somebody you trust. So if you were to go and sprain your ankle tomorrow, Every state here in the United States has direct access, some form of it. So you can go to your physical therapist, call up and say, hey, James, I'm gonna pick James because he was one of the main guys that helped me with my knee injury. Hey, James, I hurt my ankle uh, or my knee. And these are the things I'm feeling. This is how it happened. What does this sound like to you? Should I go get an x-ray, an MRI? And he says, no, you don't need to do that. Based on my experience, based on what the research says, based on what sounds like you have going on, let's Focus on basic stuff right now. You don't need an x-ray, you don't need an MRI. Physical therapists are the ones who can do this for you, okay? We have the power. So uh, hopefully you get that reference. If not, that's okay. So get assessed. That's the first big thing, okay? Then we go to what you can control. So I have my injury. I'm sitting here at home. I love moving. I've been doing a really good job of exercising, been rock climbing, been doing CrossFit, been running, all this fun stuff. Got a great garage gym here, lifting some weights, and I uh, decided to, based on the recommendation of James, my friend physical therapist here, uh, to say, I'm gonna let this heal, okay? So that's the next big thing. Get assessed, number one. Number two is respect the healing process, okay? Within that, uh, the really good, easy analogy is if you've ever scraped your elbow, fallen down, wherever that is, uh, you need to let that heal, right? You don't want to keep picking the scab and or if you put a Band-Aid over it, you don't want to keep checking the Band-Aid and continue to irritate it because that's going to slow down the healing process. So that scab that's forming, the healing that the body's naturally doing, we want to see everything we can do to speed up the healing and the things that might be slowing it down for instance, if my knee's hurting, I don't want to go and squat heavy. That's probably not something I want to do. I don't even know if I want to squat at all, and that's something we have to decide um, based on tolerance and how my knee is feeling. Fortunately for me, because my MCL, uh, just that general motion was one of the best things that I started doing and was able to control. I have a bicycle here, I have a rowing machine here, and if I'm just sitting there watching TV, I'm just moving 
all right? And just keeping that knee moving as much as possible. So understanding the healing time without going too far into the, the anatomy, the physiology, because it's going to vary depending on the extent of the injury, depending on which ligament I damage. So if it's my MCL uh, and it's a grade one tear or a grade one injury, uh, there's gonna that means there's a certain amount of fibers that are injured. I'm 16 days removed from my injury and it's feeling pretty good. I don't want to push it. I haven't done any real lifting. I just rode a 5K, nothing too intense, but I've been moving. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the other things we can control here that I've been doing that hopefully you guys can take away in fixing your injury. Again, get assessed, respect the healing process and the time involved in that. If you have more damage, it might be a month that you need to not do things. But if you don't respect that and you're like, I'm feeling pretty good, I'm going to push it you might just be slowing down your overall healing time. That's where working with one-on-one, -on -one, a physical therapist who's probably best equipped to understand healing times and the healing process, we need to have those conversations and you should go find somebody, whether it's me, feel free to reach out or somebody locally, you prefer to do this in person. Uh, if you're not in the Denver, Boulder area where I am, I can certainly probably connect you with somebody high quality and certain things to look out for. Uh, that will probably connect you with somebody who understands what they're talking about and can empower you to understand your injury better and the next steps you should take. Other things we can control, all right? You might have heard of RICE, rest, ice, compression, elevation. Uh, so that's been the old adage for a long time uh, of what you should do anytime you have almost any musculoskeletal injury, whether it's spraining an ankle or having some kind of knee injury. Put some ice on it, don't do too much. Uh, put some compression if you can and elevate, which a lot of people with the elevation miss the fact that it should be above the level of your heart. So like it should be up that high, pardon my stretch here, but if it's not, and this is actually at the level of my heart, so technically I should lay down. So now it's above the level of my heart so that whatever inflammation swelling is going on there can actually, you can use the gravity to get that back down. If I'm elevating and I'm just, I just have my leg here, it's not above the level of my heart. So you can see my foot there. Uh, that's not really elevating where it's going to improve the actual swelling. So we're talking about fluid mechanics here. And again, I have a few videos on that on the channel and we can do more if you guys have more questions on that. But the big thing here is fluid mechanics. Uh, so instead of rest, ice compression, elevation, we're focusing more on movement to replace the rest and the ice. If you rest too much, you rust. And that's a Reebok thing with CrossFit, I don't know. Uh, but if you rest, you rust, AKA, if you're just resting, you might heal up, but if you wanna speed up the healing process and you figure out which movements are safe and effective for you, for me, it was biking, rowing, um, and just again, move, getting easy, non-resisted motion into that knee. That's what kind of, for me, fed the knee from within um, and gave it the natural healing ability. So again, in terms of maximizing our recovery time and making sure we're not delaying it at all, movement is going to get you there faster than rest, okay? And movement that is too much might continue to slow down. So that's where you gotta find that magic balance, uh, Goldilocks theory, right? Don't do too much, don't do too little. You gotta find the right amount of movement that's gonna work for you. Um, and so that's something, again, the big picture thing, movement compression, uh, whether that's putting an ACE wrap on your knee, voodoo bands, again, to improve your, your fluid mechanics. I have a few videos about that. Uh, or just wearing something tight, a compressive garment if you have it. If you're on the older side, you might have some stuff like that for travel. So uh, I have a bunch from when I played uh, all sorts of sports, football and, and CrossFit and all that stuff. I would wear compressive tights underneath and I just had those laying around. Uh, from all that time. And so I, I, I still will use them when I'm working out for recovery purposes. I don't know how much they do truly for recovery, but sometimes it's psychological. So at the end of the day, I like to wear them uh, when I'm doing some workouts. It's fun. And again, it was very useful to have that for this knee injury. Um, so the other thing you could do in that situation, because the MCL, which kind of prevents valgus motion where it's collapsing inward, um, you can get a brace to actually prevent the motion. You could tape it in a way that's gonna either bring awareness to it or even protect it from doing too much motion. So uh, all sorts of other things that, again, we don't wanna to dive too deep into. We're talking big picture stuff here. So motion compression elevation is the way to go. Um, the other big part of that is 
think anytime you have an injury, I'm gonna use my arm because it's easier to visualize here. But if my elbow is my knee, which they are very similar joints, um, if that's the injury, we always wanna go above and below uh, and we can reverse how that is below and above, but uh, we want to think about what's next to there. So for my knee, my knee is my ankle joint. I wanted to make sure my foot and my ankle and doing toga, meaning I'm doing all sorts of little stuff to keep my foot moving healthfully. And then my hip, uh, which is my shoulder here, but keeping my hip moving with as much motion as possible. So I'm not compensating too much with my walking. Uh, the first day I had the injury, it was pretty, pretty painful. I thought it was a lot worse uh, than, it, than it ended up being. And I had to take, you know, steps, one step at a time. Um, and that's okay. That was what I needed to do that day. Um, the next day I was able to step through, but it was still a little painful. Uh, now I'm, I'm walking overall again, pretty good. Uh, walking my dog again those first few days was something that was not very pleasant. And I just had to balance out how much I could do and how little uh, I, I should do. So again, there's always that Goldilocks theory there. But again, playing around with the ankle joint and the hip joint, making sure they're moving through a full range of motion. And if you've never had an assessment on your hip or ankle or knee, you should certainly do that to again, help prevent a lot of those injuries coming back to fit care, care about your fitness. Your fitness includes how well your ankle moves, how well your hip moves, as well as the wrist and the shoulder and the elbow here. So big things there, above and be above and beyond. It's a band my wife likes. I'm not a big fan, but if you're into trance music, I think that's what they are. Um, above and below the joint is what we're talking about. Uh, so the last couple of things we can control and talk about here is uh, the hormones, the ability to heal inside. So a big part of that is nutrition, hydration, LMNT. That's what I got here. Stay salty, right? Uh, LMNT is an awesome. Uh, supplement. Again, I take one a day. Uh, because I was moving less, I still took one a day. I just had to balance that out with the rest of my diet and make sure I wasn't taking in too much sodium. But uh, between the balance of sodium, potassium, magnesium, LMNT is a great supplement for that. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know and uh, we can talk more about that. I got a couple other videos on the channel, so check that out. Other things with nutrition slowing down or minimizing the things that might be slowing down our healing process. So inflammatory foods, foods that we know are not good for us. And again, when you're injured and you can't do the things you love to do, and if you, I, I love to move, if you love to move and you're injured, you can't do the things you love to do. Uh, it's, it's psychologically a negative thing. So you might want to go to some comfort foods. So pizza, donuts, whatever the thing is that works for you. Um, those are not the best times to do it, ironically. So we have to balance that out and really make a conscious decision to say, this is the time to actually eat really clean and avoid the things that might be causing inflammation. And I'm not gonna go too far down that rabbit hole. Uh, I talk a lot about these concepts on a lot of other videos. So for me, dairy, gluten, were 100% off limits. Alcohol is something that might slow down your healing. Again, as tempting as it is to be like, I'm a little sad that I can't move right now. I'm gonna have a drink. Um, and, and it's easy to fall into that. I don't even wanna call it a trap, but it's just, it's what happens. So be aware that that's the decision you're making. Um, so things that might be slowing down your healing as well as things that might be speeding up your healing, anti-inflammatory foods. I had my, oh, I had my tart cherry juice somewhere. Tart cherry juice is one of my favorite things that I think improves your healing, uh, which ties into sleep. It actually helps improve sleep and sleep along with all of these good foods, whether it's anti-inflammatory fish oil, healthy fish, quality protein, all of these things. And again, I've talked about all these topics a ton, but sleep is something that will ultimately be the best thing to improve your healing time if you can improve your sleep quality. So if that's something that you can do, this is the time to really maximize it. We're about to do an episode as I record this on my other podcast, The Demand Better Podcast with my buddy, David Corona talking about demanding better from sleep and all the ways we can improve our sleep. So that's something that's going to, in those deep, deep phases of sleep, literally release human growth hormone, the same thing that Barry Bonds took um, without going too far into the, the exact details of that. But uh, the, the big part there is, again, you're literally releasing the same thing basically as steroids in terms of allowing your body to heal in a safe uh, ethical way. Um, so sleep, and this is one of the reasons LeBron James has been one of the best athletes for a very long time, is he 
prioritizes sleep. He's been rumored to sleep 10 to 12 hours a day when he can. Um, maybe not in season, but that sleep piece is something that if you can prioritize, it's gonna help you recover faster. The other thing I have access to that I really recommend if you can find is a sauna. And there's infrared saunas, there's all these different things. I'm just talking about a basic sauna. Get into a room and mine goes up to 100 degrees Celsius. I think it touched uh, 105 Celsius, which is pretty hot. Um, and Andrew Huberman uh, talked about a basic protocol and he actually talked about between be, being between 80 and 100 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes, 30 minutes of kind of stepping outside, allowing your body to recover, and then going back in for another 20 minutes in terms of dosing. It's not always realistic. That's a big chunk of time that you're dedicating to that. So at the end of the day, I tried to get into the sauna over these last 16 days as much as I could because, uh, again, I know that sitting in a hot room like that uh, without oversimplifying it is releasing uh, recovery factors, human growth hormone, things that are going to trigger within my body the ability to heal. So even though you think inflammation, swelling, again, we have this myth about ice being good for an injury, and I'm happy to go deeper into the ice versus heat in different injuries uh, thing. I found that a lot of folks, for some reason, go the wrong way with that. Somebody had a back injury from doing deadlifts, and they went to see a chiropractor, and the chiropractor told them to put ice on it because there's inflammation going on in there, uh, but it seemed that actually tightened them up more. And again, it just doesn't make sense to me outside of the, the bigger, deeper uh, conversations we can have. So I've been going on long enough. Um, let's recap one last time. So number one, get assessed, okay? Any, anytime you have an injury, whatever the injury is, uh, as much knowledge as I had, I wanted to make sure I got assessed by someone who deals with skiing injuries and knee injuries, and they could tell me, this is what I think you should do. And this is over a phone call. A video call and I just went through the things. They didn't have to touch me uh, in terms of assessing the, the actual damage. I was able to, again, fortunately be able to give enough information there, but get assessed so that we know which direction we should head. If there's some question marks and then it's saying, hey, maybe you need to do more. Maybe you need to get an x-ray. Maybe you need an MRI. Most likely you don't need those things, even though our system of healthcare tends to make us think that way. So find somebody like a physical therapist who are the experts in musculoskeletal health. We have doctorates. We can tell you, hey, you should go do this or maybe don't even worry about that. Um, so get assessed. What can we control? Respect the healing process, the healing time. Again, it's been 16 days for me. Uh, I feel really good, but I know that it's not likely 100% healed. And I still kind of test it every now and then to see I still feel a little bit. If it's not 100%, if it's still 99%, just like that scab analogy, right? If you keep picking at it, it still might not heal. And I wanna do everything I can to get it 100% healed, if not even stronger than it was before the injury, which should be the aim of any good rehab professional to get you stronger than you were before the injury as much as possible. So respect those healing times. And if, if again, a grade one MCL sprain has a two week recovery time, uh, or a four week recovery time to get to 100%, we need to respect that and do what we can underneath that maximal allowed, uh, whether it's between you and your therapist or whatever it is. So just figure out what that healing time is as closely as you can and continue that conversation with your practitioner to make sure you're not doing too much and you're not doing too little. That's that, again, Goldilocks thing. That's why it's worth paying somebody to help you get guided um, and have confidence in I'm doing the right amount. I'm not doing too much, I'm not doing too little. That's how you're gonna find that magic, magic uh, healing process and time. Uh, we talked about inflammation and the concept of inflammation, whether it's from rest, ice, compression, elevation, switching over to movement, compression, and elevation, always elevating above your heart. So if I'm laying down on the couch, I might have my leg all the way up uh, so it's on the ceiling, and again, it's uh, directly above my head. Um, so that inflammation and the, the, the fluid mechanics are moving as well as possible. Voodoo bands, massage, uh, all these different ways we can get things moving better. Uh, we'll, we've talked about all that stuff on other videos, but I'm happy to talk again and again about it. And then the nutrition side, uh, what other things? Sleep. So nutrition should improve your sleep. Sleep should improve everything else. 
And sauna is another one of those things that uh, I'm gonna keep pushing on. Uh, notice I didn't talk about ice plunges per se. Uh, for me, an ice plunge isn't necessarily healing my knee, it's having a whole systematic effect on all things head to toe. Uh, so 20 minutes, hopefully you got a lot out of this, guys. We're gonna cut it off here. Uh, if you got any value out of it, I hope you share, comment, like, subscribe to the channel, do all the things, help me grow, help me get better. I'm hoping to help you get better. We're getting 1% better every day. That's the mission here of Fit Care Physio. And with that, I leave you getting healthier right now. Go do it. Love ya.